After just recently breaking $20 per share, Workhorse has had a significant pullback. We're now back at around $14 per share, and just a couple of days ago, Hindenburg Research decided to announce that they believe Workhorse will drop another 50%. So what should you do right now? Should you be alarmed? Is it time to sell all of your Workhorse shares? In this video, I'm going to be breaking it down for you as we look into Hindenburg's claims to see if they are legit. We'll take a look at the rumors surrounding Workhorse and the USPS contract to find out if there's any truth to those and how Workhorse will be affected. And last but not least, I'll share my opinion with you as it relates to Workhorse and I'll be telling you exactly what I'm doing with my position. And we're going to be starting right now. I'll see you in the video. Make sure you're there. Hey, what's up? It's Pat with Top Ticker Trades. If this is your first time here and you want to learn about growing your wealth through investing and trading stocks in the stock market, make sure you start right now by subscribing and tapping that bell so you never miss a thing. What is going on, ladies and gentlemen? Welcome back to the channel. Welcome back to another video. Today, we're going to be talking about Workhorse. We're going to be talking about Hindenburg Research and how them shorting Workhorse will affect the share price and what that means for us, what that means for the stock in the future. We're going to be discussing whether or not there's actually any truth to the allegations made by Hindenburg Research. That is after we actually go over the allegations. So, first of all, uh, if you're new to my channel, then you may not know who Hindenburg Research is. If you're a subscriber, then you're probably very familiar with Hindenburg Research, as this is not the first time that I've uh, talked about them. So, who exactly is Hindenburg Research? This is actually a topic I've done a whole lot of research on. So what I do want you to do at some point, ladies and gentlemen, if you haven't seen it already, go watch my uh, Hindenburg Guilty of Securities Fraud video. So Hindenburg Research is no more than one man. That man would be Nate Anderson from New York. Who is he? He's some ass clown that is basically a short seller. And what that means is that he makes his money by shorting stocks, also known as going short. So what exactly does that mean? Well, just as it is common for, for investors to buy stocks that they believe will increase in value in order to make a profit, it is also common for investors to short stocks or sell them. So you would be selling shares when you believe that the share price will decrease in value. However, when someone shorts a stock, they are typically doing so on margin, meaning that they do not actually own the shares. Instead, they borrow the shares from their broker. And these shares must be returned within a specified amount of time. With that being said, in theory, you would want to borrow the shares that you want to, that you want to sell from your broker. Then you want to sell them. And then as the share price goes down, you buy them back at a lower price. Now, there's nothing wrong with short selling unless, of course, you are Nate Anderson, who likes to use his large social media following to spread false or highly over-exaggerated and misleading information in order, in order to drop the price of the shares of the company that he is shorting. So Nate Anderson has been named in several lawsuits by different companies that have went after him. But unfortunately, some of those are still pending and he has been able to wiggle his way out of others, which is exactly why he continues to do so. But let's take a quick look at some of the allegations that are coming up from Hindenburg Research or Nate Anderson. So first of all, 
He tweets, we think the July 14th USPS bid deadline will just be an empty event. We predict USPS will not engage with workhorse in any material way, and the stock will just bleed out over the coming weeks and months. So, to comment on this, first of all, let's take a look at this USPS contract and see what's going on with it. So, basically... The USPS has a contract out for their NGDV or next generation delivery vehicles. So the current fleet of delivery trucks used by USPS have basically stood the test of time, but there's high maintenance costs and it's pretty much time to retire the boxy vehicles. So USPS around 2016 or so began soliciting bids and back then in 2016 they came up with five finalists which now only four remain. Now one interesting fact about this is that only two of these finalists are able to offer electrified options. Workhorse and Mahindra. Additionally, you've got a whole bunch of environmentalist groups that are urging the USPS to choose an electric future over one that is powered by fossil fuels. So this contract is for a $6.3 billion deal, which will be going towards the replacement of the iconic Grumman LLV delivery vehicles or delivery trucks. Now, LLV stands for Long Life Vehicles. These were originally designed to last for about 24 years, and fortunately, they've lasted for around 28 years now, but it certainly is time for them to be replaced. So, to give you guys a little bit of history, originally, USPS indicated that the winning bid would be chosen by 2018, but Prototype testing and evaluation stretched into 2019, and USPS then requested final proposals from the remaining candidates in 2019 in anticipation of issuing a production contract in 2020. USPS said just last month that they will choose the vehicle which offers the best overall value. But later on, they also indicated that they would consider choosing more than one manufacturer, meaning that it doesn't have to be just Workhorse. It can be Workhorse and Mahindra. But in my opinion, it is very, very, very likely that either Workhorse and Mahindra or one of the two will be the candidates that are selected as the other options are not electric. But that's not all, ladies and gentlemen. Guess who is backing Workhorse stock? Well, it would be our government. It would be Donald Trump. You see, Donald Trump, he likes horses and he likes work. Therefore, he likes Workhorse. I uh, just made that up, but... <clears throat> Anyhow, ladies and gentlemen, this is political. Donald Trump is running for re-election. Donald Trump has promised a lot of jobs. Donald Trump has promised a lot of job creation in Ohio, which is a big state for him that he does need to win. What better way to win that state than to create jobs? And this isn't the first time that Donald Trump has shown some or showed interest in workhorse if you'll recall when gm first abandoned that factory in lordstown and was purchased by lordstown motors which workhorse owns a 10 percent stake in currently trump actually uh sent out a tweet and he seemed to be very excited about that purchase I think that, you know, personally, Workhorse is his hero. So what's he going to do now? He's going to back Workhorse. He's going to back Lordstown Motors. And I believe I know just how he's going to do it. 
You see, ladies and gentlemen, I'm also working on research for a second video, which is, or which has to do with the USBS contract and who the likely winners of that contract are going to be. And recall earlier when I said, okay, it'll be either Workhorse or it'll be Mahindra or it'll be both. The reason that I think it'll be both is because Mahindra also claims or has promised that they will create jobs in the United States by building a factory to manufacture these vehicles in Flint, Michigan. In my research, I also ran across a uh, problem for USPS. They're heavily in debt. They actually only have enough funding to make it through September. And guess what? When all that uh, COVID-19 um, assistance was going around, guess who got shorted pretty badly? Well, yeah, USPS. And guess what? There was uh, four Republicans that were behind it, or actually the decision lay in their hands. And there's other indicators that, you know, Trump had something to do with it or was holding back for now. So I think I have a pretty good idea of, you know, how Trump will accomplish getting what he wants, which is, you know, this workhorse uh, being the winner of the contract that we're speaking of. Or at the very least, they're going to be one of the winners of this contract that we're speaking of. And even just a part of this contract will be huge for Workhorse. Believe that. The share price will skyrocket. Now you're probably uh, asking yourself why I went into such a long and thorough explanation of things when all we were discussing was a tweet talking about the USPS bid deadline that's taking place on the 14th. Well, so here's the deal with that. This July 14th USPS bid deadline is just that. It's just the bid deadline. And a lot of people or investors, whatever, are under the impression that we're actually going to know the outcome of... Or we're going to know who the winners are of these contracts, or of this NGDV contract with USPS, which more than likely will not be the case. I think that the winners will not be announced until the end of 2020, so we still have several months to go before that's announced. Now, Hindenburg Research, or Nate Anderson, of course, knows this, and one thing I know about Nate Anderson, he likes to take advantage of newbies, people that don't know any better. So all the people that are buying or were buying Workhorse on Robinhood, he's trying to reach out to them and take advantage of their lack of knowledge. They're expecting an event on July 14th, and when nothing happens, they may just freak out. Along with this tweet and other crap he's saying, there could be a sell-off by these Robin Hooders. Okay, so now let's take a look at this next tweet that Nate Anderson posted. It says, we're short workhorse because we think there's an immediate 50% downside. The company has an astronomical valuation of $1.5 billion despite less than hundred k in revenue last quarter. We see the chance of winning a material USPS contract as virtually zero. A reality check is on its way. First of all, yeah, it's no secret that, you know, Workhorse only made 100 k in revenue last quarter. It's no secret that their balance sheet isn't pretty, but who really cares? They're pretty much a startup, okay, but they're just getting started. They've got a fire lit under their ass right now, so they're going to go and do what they need to do in order to secure that USBS contract, not to mention all the other reasons that I mentioned just uh, on this last, when we were discussing this last tweet of why they have 
such a significant advantage. So what they made last quarter really doesn't matter. I mean, take a look at the rest of the stock market. Is it rational right now? How long have we been hearing about the market being irrational? Well, eventually it'll catch up, but, you know, it hasn't yet. So does it really matter that workhorse doesn't have good financials or what their revenue was last quarter let me tell you this if they secure this usps contract they're going to be looking at a 6.3 billion dollar deal and then you see that this little ass clown says we see the chance of winning a material usps contract is virtually zero. First of all it's not we because nate anderson is not a we nate anderson is a him, a he, he's a one-man band, okay? So he sees the chance of winning a material USPS contract is virtually zero. Well, no one really gives a crap about what he sees. He's a moron, and he's an idiot. He's just shorting the stock to make a quick profit and trying to screw everybody else that's holding the stock. So if he had something legitimate to say, something of actual value, then he'd be able to back it up with something concrete rather than, oh, uh, the, I see the chance of winning over to a USPS contract is virtually zero. Yeah, we've seen your predictions on other stocks, buddy, and, you know, they were dead wrong. All right, moving on to the next tweet. Where Anderson says, regarding the much-hoped-for USPS contract bid, Workhorse is up against the likes of massive players with already established relationships like Ford. Well, first of all, um, like I said, Ford probably won't even be a contender. If they are, then, you know, they'll get some portion of the contract. But here's the deal with that. Ford doesn't have an electric option for uh, USPS, so I highly doubt that, you know, they're going to get any kind of significant position in this contract or any significant portion of it as, you know, compared to what Workhorse and Mahindra will get. Also, why would USPS select an unproven operator with virtually no proprietary IP? Well, because Trump is behind them and because USPS really has no choice if they want to get the rest of their funding. That's why. Okay, so on to the next tweet. Where Anderson says, Company insiders and key stakeholders seem to agree. They have been aggressively dumping shares over the past several weeks. Months. We expect insiders to continue to unload. Oh, and how convenient. He uh, makes this little table for us where he has the dates, the name of the insider, the amount of shares that they unloaded, the price that they unloaded at, and the total proceeds. So it seems that he's claiming that 732,546 Shares were unloaded. Well, let me tell you this, dip spit. Uh, just Fleming alone holds 620,171 shares after the 60,303 shares that you claim were sold at $19.08. Okay. But wait, 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 because I'm not done yet. Okay. This is just to show you how big of a lying douchebag, well, deceitful piece of crap douchebag Nate Anderson really is. So what you're looking at here, ladies and gentlemen, take a look. This is Fleming's Form 4, and as you can see, the code over here is code F, the amount 60,303 shares, and yes, we do have in section 4 AD, which means disposed of at the price of $19.08, and the amount of securities that are beneficially owned following reported transactions are 620,000 and 171 shares. Had this been an actual or a real transaction where this person is selling the shares 
then, you know, 60,000 shares isn't that much when you're holding, you know, 620,171 shares after the deal is over. However, what this little douchebag forgets to mention here, and which is why his table, the table that he created for us, doesn't have this information, is because, you know, it would be just too obvious. But here's the deal, ladies and gentlemen. This wasn't a sale, okay? As you can read on the screen right now, footnote one in green has to do with the 60,303 shares that were sold, okay, or that Nate Anderson claims were, sh were sold. <clears throat> so footnote one says, represents shares of common stock granted by Workhorse Group Incorporated, the company, under a restricted stock award agreement, vesting in equal amounts over a three-year period in six-month intervals less shares relinquished to the company by the reporting person out of and to cover estimated tax withholdings for restricted shares previously granted subject to vesting the stock price reflected in table one column four was determined based on fair market value as the closing trading price of the company's common stock on july 1st 2020 Okay, so basically, we're talking about taxes, ladies and gentlemen. These shares were disposed of to cover taxes of shares that were awarded pre- But had you gone by Nate Anderson's little table that he so kindly made for us, you would have been under the impression that all these insiders are dumping Okay, so what I'm trying to tell you guys is that this little insignificant pipsqueak little punk, uh, I can't, I, I can't do it. I'm too nice of a guy. Anyhow, uh, if you guys have any names you want me to call them, please leave them in the comments below so I can, uh, you know, learn some new names that I can be calling this little dipstick. So please, please, everyone, help me out. Help me out. Get down there in the comments below. Tell me exactly what this creep is and what I should be calling him. What I can refer to him in videos from now on. Anyhow, ladies and gentlemen, I think that we pretty much debunked everything this ass clown has said about Workhorse. Now, I think this is going to be the part of the video where... I'm going to be telling you what my opinion is as far as, you know, workhorse goes. Do I like the company? Yes, I love it. Do I think that there's a lot of potential for the company? Yes, I think there's tremendous potential. Now, this doesn't mean that the price, the share price won't fluctuate, okay? It doesn't mean that workhorse can't go down it doesn't mean that workhorse won't go parabolic again very soon all i'm trying to say is well let me just tell you a story okay once upon a time on may 8th 2019 trump sent out a tweet okay it said great news for ohio just spoke to mary barra ceo of general motors who informed me that Subject to a UAW agreement, etc. GM will be selling their beautiful Lordstown plant to Workhorse, where they plan to build electric trucks. GM will also be spending $700 million in Ohio. So prior to this tweet from Trump, the share price was around 115 maybe 150 I don't remember exactly. But guess what? The stock shot up. It like doubled or maybe even tripled in value. I don't remember the details. It's been a while. But I did get in. That was the very first time I got in. Unfortunately, I ended up taking the short cheese, okay? I got rid of a bunch of my shares for just a few bucks. Did I make a profit? Yeah, sure. Yeah, I made a great profit at the time, but guess what? Now, 
I've seen $20 out of Workhorse. So don't be a fool. Don't be a moron, okay? Hang on to your shares. And don't miss out on the big profits that are coming in the future. Even if it means, you know, seeing share prices fall temporarily, okay? Unless you want to be a trader. But, you know, you better have some kind, you know, some type of experience in trading if you want to do that. What I would personally do if it were me and I just, you know, was itching to get off of some shares. Instead, I would sell options. Sell some covered calls against your shares. Why not? I mean, sell them way out of the money, okay? Then you're still profiting still making some money and hopefully this is something you can do you know over and over again every month and you could always take the premium that you're getting and buy more workhorse with it i just know i know one thing that you don't want to do okay <clears throat> you don't want to get rid of your shares and then try to chase this thing when it goes parabolic have you ever tried to catch a running horse all right, it's no joke. All right, do not try to chase the workhorse. The workhorse cannot be chased because the workhorse cannot be caught. You'll never catch the workhorse once it goes parabolic and starts running and taking off. Remember that. Remember that I told you that. Alright, I think it's about time for me to go, but before I go, let me make sure I tell you, if you're not following me on Twitter, you are missing out, okay? This is where I do all my alerts, so you can catch them in, you know, real time. Um, these are not recommendations to buy, do your own due diligence. I just call things out as I see it. Um, all alerts are my own personal opinions and you can and will lose money if you don't know what you're doing anyhow follow me on twitter um it's right here on your screen at trades underscore ticker and most importantly make sure you smash that like button on this video if you enjoyed it and you're doing that not for me, but for the YouTube algorithm. And you're also doing it for those, those poor, unfortunate souls that need to know the truth about Workhorse. Workhorse being shorted by Nate Anderson. That freaking Hindenburg fraud, okay? The scam artist, the scammer, the shorter that just, you know, will do whatever to get his paws on your shares. He'll do whatever to get his paws on your money. So make sure you smash that like button to help this video go parabolic like Workhorse has done in the past and like it will in the future. Okay? Share it with a friend. Share it with a loved one. Anybody you really truly care about, share this video with them because it'll make a difference in their life. Alright? Other than that, ladies and gentlemen... Take a look at your screen. Check out the recommended videos that YouTube is showing you, okay? If you haven't seen them, make sure you watch them because all my content is good. Most importantly, if you haven't subscribed yet, make sure you subscribe. You should be able to do that on your screen right now. I will tell you this. I come out with brand new content pretty much every single day content that you're gonna need to survive in this game okay it's cutthroat out there you need me you need this channel so subscribe and don't be sad because you'll see me in 